My name is Amanda and Steve is also here to help us out with any of your questions throughout the webinar. In case you're not as familiar with Surefire and who we are, we're located in Northern Virginia and our all-in-one platform allows local businesses to guide their digital marketing investments from a single dashboard, providing actionable insights so they can generate more business and stop wasting money. Our mission here is to educate businesses on a variety of topics to help you succeed and help the industry grow. We want to know who you are too, so let us know where you're joining us from. You can do that by using the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. A few quick reminders before we get started. You'll get the recording of this chat tomorrow and feel free to ask our speaker any questions and make comments in the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. And because you're on the webinar with us right now, one attendee will have a chance to win a Google Home Hub that we'll be giving away at the end of the talk. Stay tuned after the presentation when we will be announcing the winner. Today, Cami Hoysa, social media expert, is here to help you learn how you can reach local customers with a focused social media strategy. She put together a really great presentation. So with that, I will pass it on over to Cami. Hi, I'm so glad to be here today. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about my experience with social media because uh, it's been a kind of a long one. So I started way back in 2005 when social media was a, a, a grandma, right? So I was a grandma. So I came up with this smart social secrets framework um, through, through from 2005 till now. And I wanna share all of that with you to here today. I wanna share you these four uh, social media secrets that I've learned um, working with huge brands, small brands, everything in between, um, between 2005 and today. And I know that all of you have different needs. And so I, but I think these four are universal secrets that all of you can learn. Um, so this was back in 2005. I had just moved to San Antonio, Texas. I was um, really kind of wondering what my next move was going to be. I started my own business. I was really excited about that. And um, I realized that I didn't know anybody and I didn't have any prospects and I didn't know what to do. So um, just maybe the isolation of that, I met this, uh, this barn swallow here and her babies. And so this was the view out of my apartment window in 2005 when I was building my first business. And these guys became my best friends, <laughs> absolutely for sure. And so, you know, I know as entrepreneurs, we all have these moments um, where we're like, not sure if we made the right choice. And that was one of those moments for me. And I started a blog at that point in time. And um, I was writing a lot of blog posts and it seemed like nobody was listening. So I'd put stuff out there and it seemed like nobody heard what I was saying and I felt really isolated and I wondered what I was going to do. Well, that's when I decided to start um, going out and talking to other social media influencers. This is Jeremiah Oyang, um, circa 2006 or so at South by Southwest. And I started to attend conferences and I also started to visit all of these blogs. Back then it was only blogs. Now, you know, we have everything else, but back then it was blogs. And I went on each blog and I put a comment on a blog post and my goal was to do one of those every day and not just any comment. I wanted it to be thoughtful and I wanted it to be some way I could connect with these influencers over time. Well, I was doing that for about three months when suddenly it happened. Um, there was a author out of California that started to, to write about my ideas and it just started to snowball from there. And that's why I'm sitting here with Jeremiah who ends up being a pretty big influencer um, even today out in um, Silicon Valley. So. Along the way, I started to be asked to speak at different places and people started to ask my advice on different kinds of things. And now I'm called by news organizations and it's a long way away from that desktop experience back in my apartment where all I had was my barn swallow friends. And so if you have, if you can relate with that, definitely let me know um, in the comments or you know, definitely go out on social media and I will talk to you. <laughs> Just make sure you, um, my name is Cami Chat on all of social media, it's K-A-M-I-C-H-A-T. So at Cami Chat, Instagram, um, Twitter, also on Facebook, you can just look up Cami's Sandbox and you'll find me there as well. What I found out was a universal principle and that was that the more that I gave, the more that I got in return. Um, that is 
where I learned how to um, do social media right. And so part of what's interesting about social media these days is that everybody is looking for how they can get more followers, more friends, um, how they can grow their accounts. And really, in the end of the day, it boils back down to this principle. But don't worry, I will give you some tips today on how to like also start right away to get better at this. So along with that, I just wanted to show you that after I had that experience, I was able to go on and build a number of brands. So all of these brands you see here on the page are brands that I have built myself personally. I've also worked with huge brands like SeaWorld San Antonio. I helped to build the Google nonprofit portal. I've done a lot of amazing work with amazing companies, but I've also built my own brands. So I've done a lot of this, and these are all very successful brands in their own right. Today I'm going to be talking about my secrets though, my smart social secrets, which is my newest brand that I'm building right now. And secret number one, really important, if you confuse them, you lose them. This is a really important um, thing that you're going to need to learn about social media and also your website and everything else. And I know that Surefire, Surefire Local is going to be able to help you with some of that with some of their product if you decide to go that way. But even if you don't, um, this is a really important um, concept. And let me kind of break it down for you a little bit. So people need to know what you will do for them, how you will help them solve their problems. A lot of websites you go on to the website and all it is is a bunch of um, information about that brand and where it came from and the background and they'll have 15 products where you can do this or you can do that and people don't know what to do or where to go. Um, that's how it is with social media as well. So you need to look at all of your bios on your social media properties and put this I help statement in all of them in some way or another. And that is I or we, if you're a, a, you know, a group, we help your target market. And we'll talk about who your target market is in a minute. We're gonna talk about how we're gonna have to narrow that down. And a lot of entrepreneurs, including me, fight this. So we'll talk a little bit more about it, but you wanna narrow that target market down and you wanna say, this is how I solve your specific problem. And then you need to talk about the tangible benefits that you give them. So what do they get on the other side? So that's really, really critical that you start thinking about what those things are. And you are gonna to wanna to like break that down into I help. So I would say that I help entrepreneurs and communicators to build online community around their social media in order to have measurable results in their business. That's what I do. So what do you do? And if you can think of what you do, and hopefully some of you have already come up with these, and if you have, put it in the chat box so the rest of the community can learn from you today as well. Um, so I help statement, that's really, really important. If you can just do that, you're gonna like not confuse people so much more. Now I wanna take you to take that I help statement, and I want you to go out to all of the different channels in which you are on currently. So LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, they all have a little space for you to have a bio or an about section. And I want you to write that about section all about your customer instead of about you. That's really, really important. It's about them, it's not about you. And all the wonderful things you've done is great, but it is only as good in so far as you can help people get to where they wanna go. So secret number two, not all social media platforms are created equal. So I know a lot of people feel the pressure to be on all the channels all the time, but the bottom line is you only need to be where your customer is. So I have lots of um, brands that only have a really strong presence say on LinkedIn because they do a B2B type of marketing and that's what they do. I have brands that are interested only in um, even um, Nextdoor is a really good example because Nextdoor is a great place to make sure you have, um, especially if you do any kind of service business, you wanna make sure that you've claimed your um, brand on Nextdoor and I have a lot of great stories about that. Um, I find all of my contractors on next door at this point because you can get that extra neighborhood feel where your neighbor next door is telling you um, who they've used and instead of picking up the phone you can do it on next door or you can go in and search at this point I just go and search you know best I did it the other day best appliance repair and up popped this guy that honestly everybody was recommending him so guess what I called him he came out he fixed my washing machine and he left it was awesome so you want to have like a presence where your people are um, it may be it may be Instagram and other places and I'm going to give you a little bit of information about how to figure that out so 
um, the first thing that you need to remember as you're going out to find out where your people are is that you're the guide, not the hero, meaning you're not going to be the hero of the story that you're telling. You want to tell the story of the people that you're helping, which makes you the guide. So if you can remember like Sensei or whatever you want to call it, or Yoda or whatever you want to put it in as far as your um, current um, you know, understanding of what the guide is, you need to have a guide that takes you through. And usually the reason we go onto the internet and start to search for something is because we're looking for a guide to tell us exactly how to do what we do. And that's exactly what we're doing in Smart Social Secrets, which is my online course that I teach around this. We do that step by step. So I know that you know people are looking for that. So you're the guide, they're looking from that to that from you and what you do. Um, so you may have heard of the hero's journey, and that's really a part of what you're trying to do whenever you're putting out content um, into social media platforms, is you want to lead people through the hero's journey. And the hero, again, is your customer. Uh, so the little guy there on the left-hand side, he's our hero, and he encounters a problem, which is the big explosion. Um, and when that problem happens, whether he, you know, he's stuck or he can't get over it, or maybe he just wants to ascend to a new level and he can't get past the level that he's at right now for whatever reason, or hey, they need their washing machine fixed. Um, so we'll use me an as an example. I was um, going along with my life and I, doing our laundry in a busy life with a lot of kids, and our, suddenly there was a huge flood on my floor. Um, last week and there was water everywhere we couldn't figure out where, where it was coming from and mysteriously it was coming out of the washing machine out of the barrel of the washing machine so that was my problem so I went on to next door and I typed in you know I need a repair person and so up pops um, my guide which is our repair company that came out and that guide took us over the bridge to a very well fixed um, um, washing machine so now I can use my washing machine again everything's great I didn't have to go out and spend another thousand dollars or you know eight to eight hundred to a thousand dollars on a new washing machine I spent about two hundred dollars to get it fixed two hundred almost three hundred and we felt great about that and the way that they brought us over that bridge was really important too um, so they brought us along the entire pathway you know from social media all the way to sale and happiness and believe me if I have another issue with a, a washing machine or another appliance I will be calling them, or if a friend asks me, I will be recommending them. So that's where you wanna be with your customer. Think about where you can meet them along the journey, and that's the content and the kinds of things you need to put in your social media channels. Um, here's four ways to find out what their challenges are. So some people will tell me, well, that's fine, but I don't really know what all of the challenges of our customers are. You may know some of them, but not all of them, and you'd like to know a little more. So you need to get obsessive about understanding your customer. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Here's four ways that I like to use. Number one is interviews, interviews with clients. Um, just asking them face-to-face -face or on the phone um, while you're there helping them. Say, hey, you know, what, what caused you to call us? Or where did you hear about us? Or what problems were you facing? And then that's a great way to start to know where they are coming from. Um, surveys and polls are great. So, you know, after you do a service, sending a survey out is really great. I know some of you are doing it anyway, and I know that Surefire has a way to do it, I think, with with reviews. But, you know, how can you do it and find out the information that they tell you? Because what they tell you is gold. Um, in fact, I'll talk to you in a minute about this really great way that I get everything that they say down and I use it back in the marketing. So you want to hear what they're saying to you, what their problems are, what are they, what's keeping them up at night, what are they thinking about um, as it relates to your service? And then of course, demographics, like who is most likely to be the person that calls you? Um, a lot of people will tell me, well, it's everyone, anybody could use our service. And you could say that too about appliance repair, for example, but generally speaking, you're probably gonna be talking to a woman. Um, there's, they're probably going to be a homeowner because they have an appliance. And so they probably have a certain age range, you know, I'd say, mid 20s, late 20s to like, you know, say 50 or something like that. You're gonna wanna start to narrow who you're talking to. And I'll I'll go into that a little bit more in a second. And then interests and hobbies. And the reason I say that is because even if it has nothing to do with your service, if you know where they're reading stuff, you'll know where they're hanging out for um, social media um, and all of that, it's gonna help you to target them in advertising in other places as well. Because Google ads um, and also especially Facebook ads let you target people based on their interests. So that could be really important. So if people like Home Depot, they might like appliance repair, you know, so that might 
you know, do-it-yourself kind of people may want to do it themselves, but not quite know how, especially inside of the barrel of a, a washing machine. So that just gives you an idea. And then if you can take all that information and craft content and information that um, kind of answers those questions, you'll get these kinds of comments. Wow, it's like they read my mind. Like, how did they know I was like worried about that or thinking about that? And really, you do need to be obsessive about like, what are your customers thinking about for that reason? And they get really happy. I mean, people feel very satisfied when they feel like they've been heard and understood. So let me give you a case study. So I had this um, call that came to me. I was actually, um, my husband's from Belgium, so we were in Europe, and they called me um, here in Houston, and Microsoft was wanting to put on a women's conference, and they were having a hard time getting people to buy the tickets for the conference. And they had a goal of 200 attendees, but they had like, I think, 50 people um, registered, and I think the conference only cost something like $50. It wasn't even very expensive. So they asked me if I would help them out. And um, when I came back from my vacation, um, they still were having issues. So I went ahead and jumped on board. And by then we only had maybe three and a half to four weeks left. So what I did is I jumped on board and I immediately went out and looked at what they were putting out to their customer. And when I got to their page, which was an Eventbrite page, it was very jargony. It had a lot of like corporate, ease in it, I guess is the best way to say it. And most entrepreneurial women who are building their own businesses are not interested in all this entrepreneurial ease stuff. They are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So um, what we did right away is we put together a lead page. I used lead pages and I think Surefire or Local might have that too. But I put a, together a lead page and I immediately sent them to this lead page and I talked about how we would support them and how if they went to the conference, I would do a three-part mastermind after the conference. And I just gave, I wrapped it up in support, like how I would support them and what I would do. And almost immediately about you know, 15 to 20 women took me up on this offer and I put them into a Facebook group, a private Facebook group. And then I started to interact with them on a daily basis. And I asked them a question. I said, what is the one thing you want to get out of the conference um, when you attend? And then they started to tell me, I want to be on the cutting edge. Um, I feel like I'm being left behind. I don't know how to handle social media. I feel like social media doesn't work or I don't know what to do with this or that. And so I took all of their words and I put them into a document and I'll go back here. And we were able to um, sell that conference out with that those ads that I ran around that. So let me show you some of the ads. These are the ads that we ran on Facebook that used their words exactly. These two were the winners. These were the ones that won, the, that got the most um, people to click through and then register. And are you a busy entrepreneur with lots of projects, but not always sure where to focus? That was one of the things they said. I'm not always sure where to focus. I want to learn to be innovative. So I said, learn innovative growth hacking, and we put that up, sent, it to, sent them to the Eventbrite page. Um, the other one was, do you feel pressure to keep up with the technology tsunami? Oh, that was something one of them said in the group, and it was gold. We put it into the, this ad, and this ad absolutely performed like gangbusters. It was probably the best one we had. Um, and also the sticky notes, I think, were fun for the people um, that were looking at this. And we were obviously going after women in this case, because it was women that were going to the conference. So you're going to have to tweak this depending on who you are um, and what your particular thing is. But I just wanted to show you this because taking people's words and putting them into what I call the word vault <laughs> um, and really having an idea of what people are saying and how they are describing their, their problem, not how you would describe it, but how they would. Um, I use Evernote, which is a free program. Um, I have it on my phone. I have it on my desk. And anytime I see like in a Facebook group, on, on Nextdoor, on LinkedIn, somebody talking about their problems with social media, I copy it and I paste it and I put it into Evernote. And then I have it kind of, I have it in four buckets and I'll talk about buckets in a minute and how I use buckets, but I have four different content buckets that I kind of work out of. And if it fits in one bucket or another, I just put it in that particular document. So that way that I always have a word vault I can go to, to write ad copy, to write um, to figure out what I'm going to write about next, what kind of content I'm going to do, and it's strategic. It makes it much more strategic. Um, there's also a really great uh, tool out there. It's Pew Internet Research Center, and I put a bit.ly link here. You can jot it down really quickly, but it's bit.ly forward slash pew, P-E-W dash S-M dash map, all caps. Um, Bitly is very cap sensitive and it'll take you to this page where you can play around with the data to see, you know, where your age group, 
um, there's also on their race and there's also um, some other things too, like income levels and things like that on there. So if you're interested in looking at demographics and playing around with those and seeing like, where do they hang out the most? Um, what what different um, channels do they hang out at? Sorry, that was like a, an animation I didn't realize was there. So what channels do they hang out at? So are they on Facebook? Um, women are on Facebook. You can see this, how this works on this chart. Um, you can also take a screenshot of this chart um, from your desk and feel free to use this. But honestly, if you go to the Pew SM map, it will tell you all the things that you need to know. Um, you can also go a little bit deeper. I also have a podcast that I do called Communities That Convert. We have a weekly podcast that comes out every week and we talk about how to build an online community and have it convert for you. And we have, uh, we talked about this in episode 93, like which social media platform should you be using depending on who you serve. So if you're interested in diving deeper into that, please feel free to jump over to communitiesthatconvert.com forward slash episode 93. It's a free podcast. Hopefully, if you're a podcast kind of listener, it's great. Or you can just listen to it on your desktop as well. So secret number three, content is only king as long as it is relevant and relatable. So what do I mean by that? Everybody says content is king. Put out the content, put out the content. And I see a lot of people advertising, you know, for $200 or $50, I will give you an entire year's worth of content that you can just put out there um, that are pegged to like, you know, National Ice Cream Day or whatever. Um, and I think these things are well-meaning, but the problem is, is that they don't engage your customer to come to you. Um, they might get their attention. They might even like, like these things or um, talk around them. And I'm not against necessarily saying happy ice cream day or happy 4th of July. I think all these things are great, but how do they relate to your business and how are you solving their problem? Not meaning that you always should have it be about you and driving stuff to you, but how do you solve their problems either for free or to bring them back to you? Um, so I do this by using what I call content buckets. And I have four content buckets that I do. So I use what I call clarity, which is strategy, because I get a lot of people that call me and say, can you build a social media strategy for me? So I do strategy. I go and I look at people's audiences and I pick it apart and I come up with exactly who they need to target. Um, so clarity is really important. And then number two, I use what I call connect. And I help people build online community around their brand. So how do you find those people and how do you connect with them? That would be the second content part bucket that I talk about all the time. The third would be create, which is how do you create all that content and keep up with all of the content and put it together in such a way that it actually serves your business and is um, it converts to something beyond just a bunch of content that's sticking on the wall. So that's create. And then calibrate is my final one, which is how do you measure that it's working? How do you know it's working? All of that. So those are the kinds of things I put out on my channels. The content falls into one of those four buckets. And I could be sharing other people's content. I could be sharing uh, my content specifically. Sometimes I may be sharing an offer, but the bottom line is that I'm sharing like how to do those four things. So what are those things for you? You don't want them to be more than five, okay? So three to five is sort of the sweet spot of buckets of things that you might talk about. Think about what those would be and jot them down and then try to start to stick to those buckets as you go forward. Um, here's an example. So I use the cleaning authority. They're my, they come and clean my house every two weeks and they now have this really cool newsletter they start putting started putting out um, maybe at the beginning of the year and they called it another one fights the dust, which I think is cute. Um, and they put it out and they actually talk about interesting things inside of the, the the newsletter. So one of this is how do you keep your home? I, can, I don't know their buckets because I haven't talked to them, but I can see what their buckets are. They're talking about how to keep your home neat, organized, and um, they also see what my problem is. Like I have, a, you know, the the holidays are coming up. I want my house clean. I want people in my house. I want to invite people in, but you know, I want things to look nice and it goes beyond just cleaning, right? Just beyond keeping your house spick and span because they're keeping my house spick and span for me. So now what can I, what layers can I add on top of that? Because they've given me that service. Well, here's a great one. Napkin folding 101. How do you do some cool napkin foldings? So here comes the holidays. It's perfect timing. This came out last week, I think. So I just wanted to show you something recent so you could see kind of what they're doing. And they they kind of go through the whole process. They give you a little video. It's great. I mean, it's a really great way to engage your audience. And I'm a, a 
current customer, so that gives me a lot of understanding. So if they're putting that in buckets, and I don't know if they've done the bucket method, but if you do, and you keep those things very um, focused on what the problems are of your of your um, of your of your ideal community member is what I like to call them, but your ideal customer, but your ideal community member, who do you want to serve? Then you are gonna draw those people to you over time. So I'm not gonna leave you alone. I do have a free thing that you can download for me as well. Call, uh, you just go to smartsocialsecrets.com and I have a, a planner that you can download. It would go really well if you have like a, uh, some scheduling tools or something like maybe Surefire Local or whatever. But if you um, do six months of content in two hours, I can teach you how to do that using this bucketing method. And you just download the, um, it's a Google Doc, it's actually a Google Sheet. You download it and it's got four tabs and I will walk you through exactly how to set it up. It's free, no obligation, no nothing. Just go and download it so that you can get started with content. Because I really think that this is really important to have strategic content in your business that matches what you're trying to, to do with your customer. Um, secret number four, likes and follows don't matter nearly as much as engagement and actions. And so that I think is where we really go wrong with social media. When people call me and say, hey, how do I get to 10,000 followers on Instagram? And I know why they want to. They want to get there because at 10,000 followers on Instagram, you can now swipe up and go to a website. So that feels like you can actually convert these things to something better. Um, the question should really be, how do I have engaging enough content so that 10,000 people will be interested in what I have to say? Um, and here's where I'm also going to tell you, never ever buy likes or people to like your page. And here's why. Those people will never engage with you. They will never buy anything from you and they're going to drive down your engagement rates. And guess what? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, guess what they love more than anything else? They don't care about your likes. They want engagement on your page. So if people are engaging with your content, you're engaging back with them. They're coming back to you. The algorithm knows that. And then they will show your stuff to more people. That's absolutely the way it is. And people say, the algorithm, you know, we've built our likes and now I can't even, they don't even see our stuff. And that's true. You know, Facebook, Instagram, um, they are not going to show your content to everybody who likes you. Um, and the reason is because they don't want to clutter the feed because if they clutter the feed too much, then people stop engaging because people will shut down if there's too much information. And so that's why they do it because they need people to come back and back and back and keep coming back. So they're protecting their business. And what we need to do is understand their business and provide content that's engaging. If you use the bucket format and you understand your customer and you're talking directly to them and you're using their own words, you should not have any problems with this. And over time, you'll get better. And remember what I said way at the beginning when I was back in my apartment, while I was just posting on my own um, blog and posting on my own blog and posting on my own blog, nobody came, nobody cared. But when I went out and I started to engage with people on their own um, on their own blogs, which would mean on their own platform. So when you're in Instagram, you do have to go out and find people who would be your ideal customer and engage with them. So that's really important. You're going to have to do that, like set some, some time aside. How much time depends on how fast you want to grow. But I would say, you know, at least you should be doing it, you know, at least a couple hours a week, you know, and I would say if you went in every day and said, I give myself 15 minutes, all I'm going to do is go out and engage, not with my friends, but with people that might be ideal clients for my business. That's going to move the needle for you over time. And then if you start putting your stories in, then they're going to see stories. And we can talk about that later. There's a lot of layers to this. I get I can't do all of this in one webinar. But if you understand that it's really about the engagement, that's that's going to be amazing. And this is Kevin Kelly. He was the um, former editor of Wired Magazine. And he came up with this idea, this plan, this idea that all you need is a thousand true fans. And I totally agree with him. If you have a thousand people that are willing to pay you something like $200 a year, no matter what, you know, every year they pay you $200 a year, that's $200,000. And for some people, that's a huge living. So you only need a thousand people that really are into what you're doing. You don't need 10,000. You don't need 20,000. You don't need a hundred thousand. You need one 
thousand true fans that will buy anything that you offer. That's what you need. So you should be working toward that all the time. Now you may need to have 10,000 fans to get your 1000 true followers. I don't know. It depends on, you know, how it works for you. But the bottom line is that you keep moving toward the long game because social media interaction, all of it is a long game, including business. Business is a long game as well. So what tactics are working now? I'm going to give you a little meat here. Um, right now in social media, video is absolutely um, killing it. Um, the algorithm loves the video, especially if it's engaging and people are talking. Um, live stream is really important. Um, live stream events, um, anything you can do behind the scenes, live streaming um, is awesome. Uh, Facebook groups are where it's at right now too because Absolutely, Facebook is totally investing in what I call the velvet rope or the, the, the walled off community where people can feel free to talk to each other and not be attacked. There's some fear right now, probably because of politics and other things that people are going to um, say something and be attacked for their ideas. So Facebook groups where they know each other, like everybody knows your name, cheers. If you guys are old like me, you'll know what that is. Um, they want a place where people will know who they are. Um, podcasting is big right now. Um, I have a podcast, as I told you, communities that convert, but um, podcasts in general, I've also seen some brands um, do little seasons of, con of podcasts. So you just do like five or six episodes about a specific topic, maybe one of your buckets. Remember we talked about buckets. So maybe one of those. Um, using hashtags and emojis, um, that's big right now too. Like what hashtag will your um, will your ideal audience be using? And also if you want a branded hashtag, you know, you might want to do some campaigns around that. There's ways to measure hashtags, which I can't get into today because we're really busy, but hash tracking is one of the tools I use for that. Um, long content, SEO. So uh, that still works, guys. Um, a blog post that is more than a thousand words, but has re goes really deep on a subject. Um, you know, Google is out there looking for expert ideas and opinions. You can do that either on your own blog or say LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a really great blogging platform built right in. So all you have to do is go to your profile and start typing. It's really great. Um, and then comments. I told you before, have some way that you're going out and engaging on a regular basis and commenting on people's um, pages um, that matter to your business. So take action. I think that's probably one of the most important things that you can do right away. Get started building and connecting with your ideal community today. Do it today. Start small and build. And one of the best ways is obviously to start putting together your content ideas. And again, if you go to smartsocialsecrets.com, I promise you, you will love the, um, the the thing. I usually get hundreds of people that ask me for this all the time. So I hope you will go and um, download it. Um, and um, that's where it is. So your six months of content ideas and two hours with a content planner. So I want to end with something kind of important to me. Um, so these two guys here that you're seeing on the screen, one is, his name was Alan Weinkrantz and the other one was Stan Stanley. They died within about, you know, three to four months of each other last year. And they were really inspirational to me because of who they were and how they were. And I just want to talk, bring this back to why this is important. Um, Alan went over to Israel and he worked with Rackspace, which is a, a cloud computing uh, group and they sent him over there just to help entrepreneurs to come up uh, to work on their marketing and their public relations with no strings attached just give them free content and talk with them and you know if their if their business would grow maybe whenever they got to the point where they needed a cloud um, computing you know service that they would think of Rackspace that was really the point of it and he ran a, um, a very long two-year campaign called be helpful and he would just go and help them and then Stan Stanley he actually is the name sake of my, my children's um, elementary school. He was a printer and a local businessman, well-known. They named the school after him while he was still alive. And he would come every week to um, talk to the kids. And the kids would come and have him sign their clothing items, their shoes, their lunch boxes, um, anything, because he was so um, famous to them, I guess, because he had that spirit about him. And his call to action was, how can I help you? And that's what he used all the way throughout his career and his local businesses. How can I help you? That was the first thing he would ask. And I'm going to tell you, I went to his funeral and every there were hundreds and hundreds of people there and all of them were remembering this part of him and how he helped them in a specific way over time. So that's what people are going to remember about you and your business. How 
can you help them? How can you bring them together? And social media is such a great way to do that. Social media is such a great way to connect with people and let them know there's a person behind the logo, that there's a person who runs this business. And people love to be able to know the owner of a business and understand that that business owner has their, bis their best interests in mind. Um, so in honor of these two guys who I loved so much in, in different ways, um, I would just ask that you go out and you take this and pay it forward and be helpful. And uh, that's it. I want to um, open it up to any questions you have. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime you want. Here's all my contact information. Um, again, smartsocialsecrets.com. You can download the free thing um, that will help you put together your content. And I just want to open it up to questions if there are any. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cami. That was a really great and very informative presentation. And before I get into questions and the Google Home Hub winner, I want to offer everyone the opportunity to get on a call with Surefire and receive a complimentary analysis of your online presence and marketing. This is a great opportunity for you to see how partnering with a digital marketing company can make a huge improvement in your marketing efforts. We just launched the poll, so please take a moment to let us know if you're interested. And if you say yes, we will be in touch after the event. All right, Cami. so we do have a question from awesome. Mark. And he asks, do you recommend using Facebook ads? If so, how long should they run? Oh, that's such a great question. So I would love to know, Mark, if you have a second to type in there what your business is. But Facebook ads, um, it really depends. Okay, so all strategy has to be based on your customer and where they are. But if your customer is on Facebook, which, by the way, 90% of the, the public is on Facebook in one way or another. Um, yes, I would recommend that you do it. And how long they need to run depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So most of um, the people that are Facebook ads experts that I work with talk about running the ads um, at least for a couple of weeks before you know if they're working or not. And you want to make sure that they're running to a specific funnel. So you want them to run to your page or somewhere where somebody has to take action on something. And you want to see if it's working. So you want to tweak things as you go. So if you have a high um, per, you know, per click rate, but people are signing up, you don't want, you're not going to want to worry too much about um, that high amount if you're making that money back. So there's a lot that goes into Facebook ads and it really does have a lot to do with who, who it is you're trying to reach and what kind of offer you're putting out there. Um, I would recommend, honestly, if you have a funnel that's working, um, that you just keep it on all the time, just change up the ad copy, you know, have a budget for Facebook ads um, that you run on a monthly basis. Um, you know, I usually put aside about, you know, three to $500 a month to run on Facebook ads because, you know, it, if, it, if you're going through a funnel and at the end buying something, that's what matters. I mean, if you're just sending them to something where they're like your homepage of your, of your website, it's probably not going to work. So Mark says that he has an HVAC and plumbing business. HVAC. Just yeah. To... Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, certainly you would want to, um, you know, t probably target homeowners and you want to see, and you can start small, you know, start with a smaller ad buy, like say, give it a hundred dollars, you know, like I want to do a hundred dollars a month and target specific audiences. So I would target women, honestly, because there's a lot more women on Facebook than men. So I target women that are homeowners and probably um, somewhere in the range of, you know, I'd start at probably 30 up just because most 25 year olds, I, I'm not saying that's not true, but they, there's probably 25 year olds that would buy your product. I'm just thinking about people who would buy fast that have the cash on hand. You know, that's what I'm thinking. And if you're selling, and I don't know what you're selling, if you're selling like a annual, um, so my HVAC guy, they sell me a package where I pay once a year and they come out twice a year and they check my, my, um, heater and they check my, um, air conditioning. So like right before summer, they do AC and right before winter, they do heating. And then, um, that's a great package because, Hey, if they can get a hundred people to do that, they have a stable income source. So that's a really great product. That would be, that would work really well on, on Facebook. I think, um, you may also want to look into what next door is doing. Cause I would say HVAC on next door is probably like one of the most searched things. Like my air conditioner is broken. Um, so on, on Facebook, it might be better for a product that is 
stable, steady, not like I have a problem right now, like I just, my AC is dead, but more like, hey, you know, prevent having your AC go dead. This is how you prevent that. You prevent it by using maintenance. So that's how I do that. Awesome. Mark's follow-up question was, should we sell tune-ups or new equipment? But I think you just hit the nail on the head with that one. Yeah, I'd say tune-ups uh, on Facebook. And then maybe on um, next door or something like that, new equipment, because that's where people, I mean, that's where people, when the S hits the fan, that's where people <laughs> go, you know, <laughs> they start, or, or Google ads too, same play, thing, you know, they're the same, Google ads or, or next door. So we have one more question from Martha. And it kind of goes along what you were talking about, but she is wondering, do you recommend Facebook ads for specific services such as water damage? I would think it works better with products. Um, it depends. I mean, it certainly does work well with products. Okay, so it's been proven for products, but for damage, I guess maybe not unless there's been like a flood in the area or something like that. I mean, I live in Houston, so of course I think about flooding, right? Um, and there's like a lot of fires going on in California right now. So, you know, it depends. So yes, I would say, you know, some kind of product that is um, ongoing. So if all you do is damage, um, I might have a Facebook presence where you, if people come looking for you. So that's the other thing I would say is have a page on Facebook that has some tips and, and, and strategies for how to deal with damage, either on your own, have a little bit of DIY damage stuff on there too, like, cause not everybody is gonna wanna hire you. But most of the time people start getting into the damage stuff and they realize, uh, this is way over my head. <laughs> so they'll go and start searching for um, information about that. So I would definitely have you know, a platform on Facebook and you might wanna run ads during certain times of year when damage is more likely to happen if, it, if it's something like that. I just don't know your business well enough to tell you, but that's what I would say. Um, Martha has a follow-up question, mm -hmm. um, basically saying, so do you think Nextdoor is better than Facebook ads in her situation if she's in the restoration business? Yeah, Martha, I mean, I would try that. I mean, I would test it though. So I would get some ads put together and test it in both places and see, um, because I would say Nextdoor is probably best because people are gonna be like searching for you there. So definitely claim your company there and start to get um, people to recommend you on Nextdoor. But, um, you know, you could try some Facebook ads very specifically, but the, the issue is about targeting. Who is your target audience? Are you able to say with all certainty who these people are? Um, is there anything that's common about them? I mean, I think most people, I'd say maybe not as much as you think because, you know, anybody could have something happen, right? And I'm sure you're thinking that too. So I would say, you know, who is it most likely going to make the decision in that case? Um, and if people do see it, like, you know, will they recommend it to a friend? So that's one, another thing that would happen on Facebook. People would see, oh, this company does damage repair. Oh, my friend, you know, Martha has damage. Um, I should tell her about this company. So, I mean, that's probably a referral thing too that could happen there. Great. Well, thank you for answering everyone's questions, Cami. And yeah. Yeah. now we're going to move into today's Google Home Hub winner. And the lucky recipient is Jacob Zorhoff. Hey, Jacob. Congratulations, Jacob. Please email marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address and I will ship that right out to you. So a huge thank you to Cami and to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us. We hope you learned something new and we look forward to seeing you online on our future webinars. Please take a minute to fill out the survey at the end and let us know how we did today and what topics you would like to hear about in the future. We love checking out the topics you suggest when we plan our webinar schedule. Thanks, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.